What is up you guys, it's Captain Jack. Welcome back to the channel. Now, you can see we're on a remote coastline and this is just day one. We're gonna do a little bit of adventure and we're definitely gonna grab dinner and I will see you guys out there on the water. Welcome back underwater everybody. So now this first place I'm diving is really unique and you can kind of see it. I'm just at the surface. I'm about probably 40 feet from the bottom, but you can see that giant dark hole. And this is what we call an underwater freshwater spring. And that is really, really, really cold fresh water coming out of that hole. And it's an aquifer that came from down below somewhere else. And I take you guys on this dive and I do it from the GoPro selfie stick. So you can really see the whole surrounding when I make this drop. Um, and you can kind of get a viewpoint from, you know, a third person viewpoint watching me make this drop. So now I'm going down. I'm, I'm once I said, like I said, once I get to that hole, it's about 40 feet. And you'll see this these edges start to close in on me and i mean it's just a really pretty shot and i really don't know you can see my shirt it's kind of blowing and that's the fresh cold water blasting out of this thing and i was really surprised that there weren't more fish inside of this hole and it was really dark gloomy and it just went on this dark cave kind of forever towards the bottom um, you couldn't really, it was really, one, it was really hard to hold your breath down there because you were kicking against the current coming out and also because it got frigid, really, really cold, kind of took your breath away. So I only made like about a minute dive going down inside this cave because it was just kind of a lot to take in and it was really trippy knowing that the surface bottom was like 40 feet, but then you go down, I think I was at like 70 feet when I went down inside of that cave. It was pretty bizarre and I'm glad I could take you guys with me on that little drop. So now we're gonna go ahead and get into some fish. Um, I believe I threw my throw flasher on this dive and we kind of went to some rocky rubble. It's like 30, 35 feet and you can hold your breath on this dive, make a drop with me. Like I said, I threw my little throw flasher and now I'm using the Hawaiian sling free shaft. Um, and I usually do that when I'm diving this shallower stuff. It's kind of easier, more manageable, uh, rather than dealing with the extra shooting line. And it's very rare you'll come across a pelagics. And if you do shoot a pelagic, it's not like, you know, you have to dive very deep to get your spear. So I threw my th throw flasher. I believe I picked it up, or maybe I didn't. Maybe I just decided to kick up some sand. Um, but this was a blind drop. And realistically, I could just sit there and see hogfish. And yeah, I did throw my throw flasher there. I grabbed it and I clipped it back onto my belt. And when I did that, after I threw the sand, made the drop, here comes some nice quality hogfish. And we haven't seen a lot up to this point. So it was really good to see some healthy fish. Um, and this is the first fish we shot of the day. And um, you'll see this Hawaiian sling free shaft in action. So I was kind of running out of breath. I went ahead and taken the sh took the shot. I could have kind of pursued the fish a little more, but I had a good enough shot. I was trying to spine the fish kind of a little farther back, but I just got the tip of this shaft went in and I ended up trailing that fish. And this is why you want a buddy dive so your buddies at the surface can also trail that fish and keep track of it. And you notice, I just hit the surface and I put my snorkel in my mouth because I didn't want to take my eyes off the fish and where it went, especially because the GoPro does a good job, but realistically it's a little deeper than, or it's a little more um, murked out than it looks at this point. But the spear fell out, it's laying right next to that rock and I'm assuming the fish ran right into that rock. Hey, let's, uh, let's get that hogfish. He's in this rock, so, huh? I did, but he's definitely in these rocks right here. And there's a lot of fish around here. So I was really tired from chasing after that fish. So Ricky was ready and breathed up and he went to make it, or sorry, um, he was ready to make a drop on this fish. I went down just to get my shaft. Um, and I had a little bit of breath. I wasn't, you know, I never want to push myself, but I kind of took a quick glance to see if his head was popping out right in that hole. And that's exactly where I assumed he went. I have that thing loaded up, ready to see him whenever I stick my head in. I didn't see him, but I could see that it opened up on the other side a lot bigger. I didn't want to, you know, rush it. It's not very deep. And I wanted to make Ricky to make the drop and try to get him inside of that cave. 
So on this drop, he makes a really good shot. I think. Yeah, he does. He's just making sure that he can get the fish if he wasn't going out that hole. So now I go in here. He said he shot him. I load up just in case, but I see the fish. He kind of went away from Ricky whenever Ricky stuck his head in that hole. I saw that spear was lodged in his skull, and I know that sucker is not coming out. Those um, headhunter tips do a really good job of securing the fish. Um, so I just grab the shot line, grab the spear, head to the surface. Awesome backup diving, awesome team buddy work, and we got that fish That's in the cooler. Good shot. I like, he swam away from me, right to me, and I saw this slip up, and I was like, dude, you got him. <laughs> I like just, yeah, that was a good shot, thank you. Yeah, awesome, thank you. There you go. Good job. He came out right as oh, you yeah. dove, and I was like, "That's definitely him." I saw the scar on yeah, his back. I saw that gash on him. That's a good one. That's a more proud one. I like that. So we're roughly in the same area, and it was a good thing this hogfish, you know swam to this ledge because it led us to some other fish um bradley was loaded up he was ready to shoot a uh, strawberry grouper that was in there um but the thing with the pole spear it's a little big so it's hard to maneuver with the hawaiian sling it's a little more low profile so i can just choke up on the spear and shoot it like a pole spear in this hole and that's exactly what i do on this but when you do that you pop the fish you want to make sure like right there you want to make sure you get your hands on the fish and also make sure you push that spear to go so it goes all the way through um and that's what i do i reach through i'm like kind of looking off to the side but my hand is reaching around grabbing the other gra getting a hold of the fish's gills and then i don't need to worry about him tearing off the spear or anything like that um and uh also when you get a hold of these fish make sure you get a good grip on them because any kind of like crazy movement they'll catch you off guard and they'll sh they'll squirm out of your hands and swim back to the rocks you probably could have shot him if you'd gotten the angle right so we go into some shallower areas. You can see my throw flasher out there in the middle of the screen. We were on these little grass flats and there were just giant muttons. You can see it off in the distance. Giant muttons just cruising these grass flats, like a ton of them. And they were kind of coming into the flasher, but not really. See there, I think there was one right there up ahead or maybe that's a Margate, I can't remember. Um, yeah, there was a mutton right there, another one. So a ton of them just came in and they were j hanging out just on the outskirts. I tried going down, I tried grunting, I tried the throw flasher, I tried dusting, trying to get sand up. It wasn't working. Uh, these things just kept doing this back and forth, trying to, you know, and I just kept playing this game. Um, but the advantage of, the, of this is it did actually work out. Um, you can see right here, I end up throwing the, and I just do this dance where I just throw the flasher and I make a drop, throw the flasher, make a drop. But on this dive, a school of yellow jacks came into all the commotion and I swam to the bottom, started doing some grunting. They came in and came in just a little close and you get to see me shoot a pelagic on this free shaft. And uh, it's different, but it's definitely a lot of fun. And you see that spear just weighing the fish down and you want to make sure you get a hold of the fish if you can. And you see, I let go of the spear. I don't grab it. I don't, you know, horse it. I just barely touch the shaft until I can get up and get crossways on the fish because that barb, it could easily slip over the tip of the spear. And so I just ended up getting one in, pushing the other side above the water. And that enabled me to, one, him not get off the end of the spear and me get a hold of both sides of the spear. And so now we have some fresh sashimi for food tonight. So now we move into some deeper areas. Uh, the spot we're at is around 70 feet and it drifts into about 85, 90 feet. Um, and when you're using pole spears, unless you are advanced, I don't suggest diving this deeper stuff. Um, if you're new to it, I highly suggest use a float line. Um, our gear is kind of tricked out. We've learned from trial and error. And you see Ricky um, making a drop using his uh, belt reel. He puts a beautiful shot on this uh, mutton, really demobilizes it, hits him in the spine. Uh, and I, either way, I'm going down there, one, to fend off sharks, 
and two to see if he needs a backup shot or if he needs any assistance uh, but he's pretty much got this taking it easy on the way up no, no crazy commotion to you know attract sharks but he grabs his knife brains the fish solid dive and a solid fish love 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 mutton snapper that was awesome dude so you guys hold your breath on this drop with me this is a really cool drop and you see you can't see bottom so we are in i believe between 85 and 90 feet i think we're around 88 feet uh, i make a drop a blind drop obviously uh, but you can kind of see where i'm diving it's a crack uh, you'll see right there in the middle of the screen there's some reef but then there's also this white sand patch between this other part of reef um, and I usually like trying to make drops along edges like that because uh, hogfish hang out by them, muttons hang out by them, and also you can maybe go down under the ledge and maybe get a grouper slipping under one of the edges if once you get to the sand. Um, so like I said, blind drop, just have my head on a swivel, looking around. Uh, Bradley's at the surface. He ends up coming down halfway and meeting me, but see exactly what I was talking about. I saw a hogfish off in the distance, literally coming right to me because he wonders what's in this crack area of his lineup. I probably should have shot like right there, but I waited an extra second, saw he was going to turn. But either way, I landed a shot before it was too late. Um, got my hands on the fish because usually when you're diving this deep stuff, sharks will buzz and come out of nowhere. Uh, and you see me just looking around, making sure, you know, I got a hold of the fish. It's secure. Nothing's going to, you know, come take it out of my hands because it's not moving. It's not moving. My head's on a swivel. If I do see a shark, I can kick him away. Um, and also, Bradley's right there in case I need backup. And he also got some really cool GoPro footage of me. And um, stay tuned because he has some really cool free shafted for the first time on video towards the end of this, uh, end of this trip. Bonus. Nice. Good GoPro game. So after I'd made that drop on this deeper stuff, I got that hogfish in the boat. Uh, I, you know, obviously I was pretty amped up about diving this area because, you know, you make a blind drop and fish will come into you. And sure enough, that's what happens on this dive. Making a drop, um, like I said, I think this is between 85, 90 feet. Uh, I think this one might be a little bit deeper because we drifted off into the deep part. Um, and stay tuned, you're going to see some even deeper diving uh, within the next couple clips. But I make a drop, go ahead and load up because I see mutton off in the distance. Um, they're coming in right there. They're already meeting me mid-water column. And this is a weird, weird dive. But see all the muttons. It's crazy. So I was being really selective, picking the biggest one. Um, this one came in, gave me an easy shot. But look at this shot. It's so weird. I don't know how this thing, it comes off the spear. Really good shot in the fish. Somehow rips out right there. Um, and then I go ahead, try to reload while I'm, I think it's like 90 feet here. But my line was kinked, so I couldn't hold tension. So I was just holding in tension with my hand. And then whenever I shot, I think maybe my tip came off. I tried to do, I should have just taken my time. I should have made sure the rubber band was pulling the, pulling the cable tight enough. But that fish unfortunately got away because you can't see it from the surface. Um, and he just went and got into a hole and he's pro he might live to see another day, but probably not. He'll at least go back to the resource and um, another fish will end up eating. Dude, there were so many fish. I don't know how that ripped out. Nice mutton. So this is what I was talking about, the deep dive. So this drop off ended up going and it ended up dropping straight down to like 400 feet. So go ahead and hold your breath on this dive. I'm taking you guys to 120 feet. So sit tight and just see what this bottom looks like.
So that's really, really cool, kind of spooky seeing that drop off and how eerie it is. Um, but when you do this, you want to make sure you are always buddy diving. You can see my safeties at the surface. And I told them beforehand that I was going to make a deep drop and to keep an eye on me. And that's exactly what happened here. It's easy to get lost down there. Here we go, making another long drop. And this is a little tiny reef patch in the middle of the sand. And I believe it's about 80 feet to the sand. Uh, and I'm down here for quite a while. Uh, Ricky ended up diving. I think we got four or five people in the water right now. But uh, so if two people make a drop at once, it's not, you know, the end of the world. Um, and just as long as you establish who's watching who, uh, who's buddy diving, team diving. Uh, whenever you're making drops like this. So we go down to about 80 feet. I end up going to the sand, doing a lot of grunting, and nothing shows up until the very, very end. Uh, and I end up zooming in on it so you'll be able to see. Um, but you see me, I go, obviously I checked out the reef when I was making a drop, and there was nothing on the reef, like no grouper, no Kubera snapper or anything like that. It was all like kind of small reef fish. So Usually what happens when there's a little rock like this in the middle of nowhere, when you pull up to it on a boat, the stuff will scatter out into the sand or the, the grass. And so I went to the rocks, threw up some sand, made some commotion, doing some grunting, hoping that whatever we scared off potentially comes back. And sure enough, out in the distance, I spot a stud hogfish and this thing was really big for me to spot it from so far away you can see it right there um now i'm towards the end of my dive i've already been down there for about a minute and a half i do a little bit more sanding grunting and i'm really hoping he starts to beeline in and if he does i'll make that leap towards him give him the spear and head to the surface without really really pushing myself but i kind of go a little closer realize he's not there but i want to see if he's still kind of coming in so i swim kind of at an angle a little bit that direction hoping i see him off in the outskirts but unfortunately he booked it and that's just the way it goes sometimes i cut my losses head to the surface and it was about a two minute dive um down there and i was hoping for a fish but you know, they're not always winners big hog was off in the distance you want to come in though so remember earlier on, I talked about uh, using Bradley's footage. So this is his GoPro cam. And now he's using a uh, pole spear roller. So you can see the difference in the action uh, when he's shooting them. Me, honestly, it's a personal preference. They're both really good spears. Um, it's just what you prefer. If you're just starting off with a pole spear, uh, I say, I mean, you can use either. Rollers are a little more expensive, I believe, but either way, you're going to be happy with whatever you get um personally i've shot traditional bands growing up so that's what i'm used to uh, bradley i don't know if he's been super familiar with pole spears but i think he's just started off on this nomad and he it crushes it with it <laughs> um but you can see he made a drop went straight down to the bottom sure enough here comes some mutton and he ta trails these guys for quite a while um you know you can see the timer at the bottom you guys, hopefully you guys are holding your breath, seeing if you can hold your breath with him. He's trailing these guys, loaded up, ready to spear them if they kind of slow down a little bit. But you can see him giving them the tail wag. 
they kind of speed up and he kind of realizes, all right, they're a lost mm-hmm. cause. But he turns around, muttons come in after the action that he, he was, you know, created by chasing after those other ones. Sure enough, these ones give him a shot, turns around, gets a shot right in the face. Um, you see this thing kind of pull a little bit, but he has his belt reel. He's managing the line. He's thinking safety over the fish, so he lets out some line so he can get to the surface safely, and then his buddy divers will come there and uh, help take care of the fish. Like I said, Bradley had some other footage of him using the Hawaiian sling, and this is, I believe, this might be his first fish with the free shaft Hawaiian sling. It was a beautiful hogfish, came cruising in in the sand. He makes a uh, dive bomb on it, draws back, and lights out stone shot. If you want a uh, textbook on stone shots, that's it, right where that color changes with the fish that dark especially on the male hogfish it's very distinct where that color changes and right where that meets the light color of the fish meets with the dark color on the head and you'll get some lights out stone shots on some hogfish and he did it perfectly in that clip also since he was new to using the pole spear or the hawaiian sling i wanted to show this clip this is what happens when you're shooting pelagics and don't get the shot on them when you're free shafting. Uh, he's going after one of these yellow jacks. He knows how good they are. He tries to take the shot and there goes his spear, just darts into the bottom. So he has to go to the surface, do another breathe up, go retrieve his shaft, and then come up and do another breathe up, ready to dive. And that's the only disadvantage I think of using the, um, or one of the few couple disadvantages of using the um, free shaft Hawaiian sling. Um, but you get to see him use it properly here. He makes a drop on this mutton that's kind of just cruising the bottom. Makes really slow, you know, just descending and kind of angling his body so he goes towards the fish. Not really kicking towards him. Draws back. Once that fish realized he was in pursuit, you could see the fish speed up and Bradley shot the fish. Um, But the problem with the free shaft is the back of the spear, there's no barb on it. So what happened is he shot the fish mid mid water or mid uh, mid body. Uh, the spear went halfway through the body, and then he, the fish swam off, and the back side of the spear came off the fish. But it's okay because most likely that fish is going to rock up, and that's what he did right here. And when that happens, usually you get another backup shot at him. And I believe Ricky went down, found the fish in this hole, and went and made a backup shot before the sharks got all fired up. And here's Bradley, who already retrieved his shaft. He's going to come down and realizes that the pole spear's got him really good. And that's the advantage of the pole spear. You do have those slip tips that do some serious work, and they really increase your chances of landing fish. Um, So Ricky put a stellar backup shot in that fish, uh, and all he needed to do was grab the cable, grab the spear, and head to the surface. Another solid button in the box. Double save. Now this is what you want to have happen every time. This is a perfect example of um, using a free shaft and things going really well uh, where you don't have to make drops up and down. This mutton was really chill on this uh, coral head. Bradley uses that, you know, the sea fan as a little bit of cover. It lands a really good shot in that fish's head. Unfortunately, it didn't stone it. I don't know why. That was a really good shot. Um, but. That spear is just dragging him down, and Bradley tries to swim, tries to get a hold of the fish, and he and he does. Um, and once you get a hold of that fish, once you get that fish, like the, your hand in the gills of that fish, regardless of the spear, that fish is yours. You're going to get him, and um, also you're going to pull into your body, make sure there's no more wiggling and no sharks will come around. All right, guys, now that was just day one. So we've only gotten into a l- taste of what's coming your way. So right now is day three, so I, n- I already know, I already know, but you guys will see from home. You do not want to go anywhere. Stay tuned next week for another one of these episodes. I'll link another video that you that I've shot in the past that you guys would definitely enjoy. So check on, out one of those, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more content, and I will see you guys next week for another adventure. Later.